Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Candy Conversation Show with Coach Stacy, where we have real people, real topics, and real stories right here on 108 Praise Radio, where we voice the gospel. <laughs> That's my little intro there. Candy Conversation. Happy Saturday, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Coach Stacy, certified life coach, speaker, and author. I and I empower women and a few select men to dominate in their purpose. My testimony of overcoming domestic violence and cancer and many, many, many traumatic experiences makes me very, very passionate about helping people struggling with wanting to throw in the towel. So not only have I broken free, but I've helped countless other people walk boldly and authentically in their purpose over the last 10 years as a life coach. Um, and right here on Candid Conversation, we have amazing guests who come on and share impactful stories, books, and testimonies. And I just believe that it's important to share your story. I believe the experiences we are given are gifts to share with others. You never know who's listening and watching and who needs to hear your story of overcome to give them hope. And today... I have an amazing guest. I actually have two amazing guests. We're going to bring the other one in in a little while. I have a nice little treat for you. But right now, I have Mr. Anthony Wilson in the place. Hi, Mr. Wilson. How you doing? Well, good morning. It's a joy and a privilege to be here with you. Yes, and it is. I'm so excited um, to share what it is that God's doing in my life and in this season. But um, I am just uh, honored to be here. And thank you for uh, having me to come by and share with you and your audience. Oh! I'm a little high energy now. So. Wonderful. wonderful. <laughs> Very high energy, but okay, we're going to get this thing going. But I wanted to bring Mr. Wilson on, so that, and we're going to talk about who he is, what he does, and how he is impacting lives, and he's doing that all over the place. I'm, I'm very, 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 I admire him, actually. He, he does a lot in the community. He does so much. So we're going to get into that. I want to share with you his book. He has written the book, The Eve Effect. The Eve Effect. I want y'all to see that. Y'all need to go get this book. Eve Effect, you women. They got secrets in here. You need to get this book. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got some secrets, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anthony Wilson. But before we get going good, I want to give some shout outs. A big hello to the B5. I see my nephew, Alfredo. Hey, hey, hey. Um... Jeanette, Lynette, Gina, Jennifer, Jessica, all of you guys, thank you for tuning in. Hello to all of you listening this morning to the Candid Conversation Show with Coach Stacy. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I want to say again and invite you guys out to my grand opening. If you are in the Atlanta area, the ICU experience, we will be experiencing the ICU grand opening on August 2nd right here in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you're interested, hit me up for the information or you can email at info at icuacademy.com. And now without further ado, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to read his bio really quick. Let's see here. Mr. Anthony Wilson. Amazing, amazing, amazing. He is an Atlanta native. He's an amazing father of three handsome sons and he's a, uh, he's a coach, a mentor, a speaker, a community activist. He's the senior pastor of Church 180 located in Locust Grove. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. That's Locust Grove, Georgia. Georgia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, of course, as you know, he is the author of this wonderful book, The Eve Effect. Um, I want to say it does say secrets. Oh, I didn't even know it had secrets right there. <laughs> secrets to getting your desired results from him. So, ladies, you won't hear, hear this going to be a good little conversation here. But he is well known in the areas of leadership and ministering to youth. Um, he also was the co-host of a weekly radio broadcast, Inspirational Chat, on Love 860 AM. He has appeared on Love and Relationships with host Joyce Little of WAOK 1380 AM, The Jay and Shay Show on WDJY 99.1, The Game Changers with Lisa Faulkner of WAEC Love 860, Woo, you get around, honey. All over. All over the place. Kiss 104.1 FM with Tawanda Black, and he also actively participates in relationship panels throughout the country. Um, but we're going to talk about the evil fit real quick. 
Well, no, let's 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 tell us a little bit about who you are first. Let's do that first. Again, I, I am from Atlanta, uh, born in Atlanta, raised in Decatur, Georgia. Uh, I have three uh, sons. Uh, one son passed tragically last year to a car accident. So continue to pray for me and my family as we deal with uh, that loss. Mm, but uh, yeah, but from no that, uh, he left us a wonderful, wonderful granddaughter. And so I spoil her to death. I'm sure. And uh, I can't tell her no. Mm-hmm. And let's see, I passed a wonderful church in Locust Grove, Georgia called Church 180. We've been in existence about 13 years. And uh, the Lord is uh, doing great things in what we're doing there in the Henry County area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actively involved with um, a program called Fathers Incorporated. Okay. Uh, where we do things to um, get men more involved into their children's lives. And then we uh, do a lot of um, activities in the school where we we read to the students. And we do that on a continual basis. Uh, We believe literacy is... um, is needed and necessary. So that's those are some of the things that we do. And currently also... Uh, I am a part of um, what is called Imagine Greenhaven, where we're trying to get the South DeKalb area um, incorporated so we can have our own city, so cityhood. Okay. And so I'm actively nice, nice. and strategically involved in that and we because we got to make that happen That's right. uh, in our area. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm working on my second book called The Adam Effect. Being the man a woman can't resist. Mm. And so um, that book should be out before the year's uh, out. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to come back and share some things yes. about the Adam effect. Oh, I like that. And so the Eve effect is a wonderful book the Lord gave me a few years ago, Secrets to Getting Your Desired Results from Him. And so people always ask me why, why this book. And my main uh, reason for writing the book and all of my books at this point is I want to – uh, help families because mm-hmm. what has happened in our community has been a uh, extreme breakdown in the family unit. And so, with that being I said, I don't want to I don't want to put it all on women, but I do believe that God um, puts something in women to help us men be better. So, Agreed. so my <laughs> so my reasoning behind that is that when women make better decisions, it'll help men make better decisions. This is true. And so, the evil effect is the undeniable, unexplainable, irresistible impact and influence a woman has on a man. Mm. Mm. So y'all that's a little that. bit about me. Oh, y'all hear that? Okay. Well, the, the evil effect. Mm-hmm. And you said God gave you that. Um, I, right here, the synopsis says the book was written to help women understand the mind of men. Um, The Eve effect tells the secrets for women getting their desired results from their mates. So so you believe that there is a certain way we are to be in order to get the desired results. Yeah. So if you're familiar with the whole uh, story with Adam and Eve, there's a point in that narrative that is so important that people miss. We often take a negative context of what she did that what people want to blame Eve for sin being in existence. That's not the argument I want to bring out, but mm-hmm. I do want to deal with the specific uh, thing of her not nagging. Mm. She didn't complain. Mm. She didn't coerce. All she did was handed fruit to Adam and he ate it. So in him doing that, she was being deceived by the enemy while Adam was completely being disobedient to God. Right. What was it about that woman that would cause that man to completely disobey God? It's called the evil effect because she did not complain. She did not nag him. She wanted him to have what she had and he took it. Mm. And so I believe that every woman has that influence on a man. I see that. I see that. And to some, you know, that will sound like um, a magic spell Hmm. that they can use to get whatever it is they want from a man, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Do you understand where I'm going? Right. Okay, but at the same time, you should be trying to get the desired result from the man that was made for you. Am I right? Right. So what happens is all all women have the ability to have influence and impact on men. Mm-hmm. The key 
is knowing how to use it. Mm. Um, and when you don't use it in the right way, you may get some things that you want, but uh, on the end of that, uh, it may come back to be be to your detriment. So to to use the evil effect in the right way, uh, you can get what you need, and the man can get what he need, and everybody will uh, ultimately live a life that will bring glory to the God that created them. Mm. So yeah, That's, I'm speechless. Okay. <laughs> You believe that, huh? I believe that. That's I believe amazing. that. I, I, I'm a firm believer that no man, and I repeat, no man can maximize his God-given potential and even purpose without that woman. Mm. This I, I can agree with that. I can, I can agree with that to a to a sense. <laughs> she says to a sense. To a sense. Okay. I, I, I know that you um you mentor women. I know you have women clients that you mentor. Yes. Uh, and I think a, a, one of the biggest questions that a lot of women have is, how can I heal from the hurt of a broken relationship? Does being broken prevent you from ha- using your evil effect properly? No. So what happens, what my book does is when you read it and you've gone through negative relationships or bad relationships or painful relationships, Uh, my book will give you some clarity and some insights to possibly why you went through what you went through. Mm -hmm. For Mm -hmm. some women, it will also give them closure. Mm. Um, And these are testimonies I've gotten from women. I had one lady call me upset because um, for years she had wondered why this particular relationship that she had ended the way that it ended. Mm -hmm. And she was upset because um, she had my book on her shelf for so long. And hadn't picked it up. And hadn't read it (laughs) and got upset with me because I did not uh, follow up with her to see if she read it. And when she read it, um, she got clarity and closure to Mm -hmm. that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what women have to understand is there's a certain mindset mindset that men have when it comes to relationships. As a matter of fact, the way we are raised as boys onto manhood is completely different. From women, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. uh, one of the things I always share uh, with women is, uh, and it's, it sounds very um, elementary about <laughs> what I'm about to say, but it's true. Men think differently they do. than women. They do, and one that's one of the problems women have. They yes. think men should think the way they think, yep. and we and we don't. And with that being the premise, uh, a lot of times uh, women go through unnecessary pain, Mm -hmm. unnecessary situations Mm -hmm. uh, in relation to. So my book kind of deals with all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you're looking at a woman that may be listening and you've been uh, dealing with painful, painful past in your relationships. Grab my book and read it so you can get some insights on how the man's psyche is. Mm -hmm. Now, now let me give this disclaimer. Um, I don't have to uplift women by putting down men. That's right. And I don't have to uplift men, men by, by putting, putting down, down women. women. That's good. And I That's don't. Good. Furthermore, men appreciate the evil effect when they read it. Uh, all Matter of fact, all the men that have ever read my book have all said the exact same thing. Number one, they said, man, you told the truth. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, thank you for telling women how we think. Yeah. So. It's in there. You guys do not think like we think. Oh, no. And I noticed that that is a, a big issue. A lot of women expect the man to think as they're thinking. Mm-hmm. They want something done a certain way. Mm-hmm. And then they cause this turmoil in the yeah. relationship because yeah. the man didn't do it the way the woman thought it should be done. Exactly. They don't think like we think. And I cover a, a vast array of subject matter in the book from... Um, the male ego, all the way I talk about sex and how we view sex. I talk about uh, how to handle yourself uh, in dating and in marriage. And furthermore, um, what to stay away from, how to identify certain kinds of men. Mm -hmm, And mm so um, when you look at the chapters, uh, the first chapter talks about size does matter. Mm, It does. And and so... (laughs) And so, of course, keep it right, Stacey. Keep it right. <laughs> of course, when I talk about size, does matter. I'm not talking about the male anatomy. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, 
so given that being the case, uh, women get clarity. Thanks for clarifying what, that. Of what that really means. <laughs> so, because honestly, Stacey, if you be honest, you know, you can you can be with someone who may have all of that, but it doesn't mean your relationship going to be long lasting. That's right. That's right. As a matter of fact, right. most women, if you be honest, it have caused you a whole lot of trouble. A whole lot. Because a lot of times, uh, a lot of men who who may be gifted like that like to share their gifts. That's that's so right. So that's so true. So <laughs> he spoke truth. <laughs> you can second that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We passed collection plate around, but that one. <laughs> yeah. But it's the truth, though. It is. Um. I kind of touched on it a little bit, but what does it mean to be unequally yoked? Because I, I, that's what I was kind of going towards in the beginning. Of course, we have the Eve effect. You have secrets to show us women how to get our desired results. But if you're not equally yoked, I don't believe that can happen. Right. Well, see, again, uh, there there's a lot that has to happen on the back end for you to have a successful relationships. And so let me just let me just help with some of that. Okay, so natural order should be that the female should go from the covering of her father to the covering of her husband. Okay. That okay. that's that should be the ideal situation. That's right. Now being that the Bible is the uh, an instructional manual for life, it does not really deal with the dating aspect. Mm -hmm. because, again, it should go from the covering of the father to the covering of the husband. Okay. When that does not happen, you are automatically thrust in a realm of dysfunction. That's good. You, you really are. I know people want to say any other uh, way, but it, it's really that you're operating in dysfunction because that's was that was not the intent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that God had mm -hmm. for relationships. Right, right. All right, and so if that's the case, then there are so I want to share with women there are general rules that you should follow in order to be effective with the Eve effect. So number one, uh, if you are a believer, you shouldn't date an unbeliever. Mm. That's number one. Okay. And you should get that straightened in a matter of a few sentences. Right. And so now I do I do events called uh, Ladies Nights Out, and I do uh, women's retreats and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And mm -hmm. so, so I share principles about this that are not necessarily in the book. Mm -hmm. But I talk about, number one, uh, if that person is not an unbeliever, if that person is not a believer, I'm sorry, if it's not a believer, you should not get involved in a relationship with them. Because, number one, the first thing is, if they don't believe in what you believe in, you're going to always have yeah. a point of contention there. This is true. So when your commitment is to your ministry or to your church or to they things of God, they are not. And you're going to spend a whole lot of, of time trying to explain your commitment to someone who's influenced by Something Anything other than God. Right, right. The second thing is, I tell women, is don't ever get involved with an abuser. Mm -hmm. So, case in point, if a if you're in a relationship or you're with someone, the very first time, the very first time they call you out your name, the very first time they lift their hands to do anything to you that is not positive, you cut them off then. Okay, I, I I want to hear the rest of your principles, but at this point, let me ask you this. So you five years in, and then that happens after five years, you cut it off? Got to go. Got to go. It's a tough decision. Um, it may even put you in a place, because here it is. You cannot, you cannot rationalize. You cannot... Well, some people get some women can't rationalize what you just said. You, you, oh, let's, let, let's, do this. <laughs> let's do this. Let's do this. See, you, you can't you cannot change another individual. And that's that's, that's the right. problem women have. They want to fix Preach. He preaching. other people. He is preaching. They want to fix men. You cannot you fix can't do it. men. That's right. All right? And then furthermore, you, you may not have dug deep enough in that man's background to find out from whence he, he, he has this attitude towards mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for instance... 
in many regards, most men only repeat that which they saw. Right, right. On the flip side of that, I tell women this. The man you desire, that, that whatever that picture of that man you have for your life, that man, in most instances, have never had modeled before him the kind of man you need. So with the same Ooh, principle, good. Good. a man cannot be what he's never seen. And so if he calls you out your name, it's because he's probably seen or been in that environment before mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and somebody accepted it. That's right. Even if you're married. I, I- I'm just saying. Even if you're married, if if you are with an abuser, the abuser have already broke the vows. Right, right. He's already broke the vows. And domestic violence in this context in which we live now in the 21st century is not just males on women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's now women on men now. This is true. Okay, but since we're talking about women today, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay. So Let's if you, with women. so the, so the, the first time a man calls you out your name, I'm telling you, that's the day the relationship over. Forgive them and say, hey, I forgive you. Thank God for you, but we can't be together. Mm-hmm. I don't care if listen. I don't care but if see, here, here's where with women. Most women's emotions will not allow that to happen. Okay. It, just point blank, period. Okay. Well, and, and that's when you, and I'm going to talk about that in my closing, but that's when emotional maturity uh, needs to take place. But a lot of women aren't there. You know, after five years, oh, he's never done it before. I'm going to give him another chance. I know, been there, done that. Right. And I understand. I clearly understand. But I'm, but, the Bible says my people perish from the lack of lack knowledge. Of knowledge. That's and right. if, if you're getting this knowledge now, now here's what's interesting when you read that text, Hosea 4 and 6. It, he says the people perish from a lack of knowledge, and then he goes on to say because you rejected it. Mm, so if, if knowledge and wisdom is in the next room, and you know we've given you a memo, we've given you a text message, we've uh, DM'd you and told you that, that in uh, room 308, there's wisdom and knowledge. Mm-hmm. Go in and get you some. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you decide, I'm not going to go there. Go. You rejected that knowledge. That's good. And thus, you have to, and you keep on reading it, and it says, and because you rejected it, God says, I'm going to reject you. Mm-hmm. So if that being the case, if you're getting this information, if it's in a book, if it's in a seminar, if it's in a class, Whatever it is, if it's available and you decide for whatever reason you don't need it and then you suffer the consequences mm-hmm. of not going, mm-hmm. then you have to deal with the process. And hopefully yeah. you can live long enough to live through that thing so and you can grow and go to the next, next level. Right. That's, that's good. He preaching in here. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. I do have another question. Well, you answered one of them. I had someone in as is it right for a Christian to date or marry a non-Christian, and you answered that already. Again, again, right? And I, everybody's on different levels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Going on a date, and so here's the thing, Stacey. We got to we got to clarify definitions. Yeah. If you go out to eat with someone, and you set a date, and you've gone to eat. You need to define what it is you've done for yourself mentally. Mm -hmm. Because just because you have went to eat some grocery with people, I call (laughs) it grocery, doesn't necessarily win in a relationship. Right. Okay. That's right. That's right. And that's emotional. Matter of fact, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. My boyfriend, now he took me out to eat. And let's do it this way. (laughs) Let's say you do it often. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing about eating. Everybody has to eat. Right. Okay? I agree with you. And then somebody has to pay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in most instances, it's the man who pays. Mm-hmm. But that does not mean you're in a relationship. You're committed. That's right. You're exclusive. That's right. Okay? That's right. And so, um, so that is where a lot of women get confused. All right? And it's the same thing with men. Men mm-hmm. think the same thing. Mm-hmm. But, but we're talking about women. Mm-hmm. And so you have to you have to clearly define the parameters of what you're doing, mm. all right. And so even in my book, I share with women, um, not, not to give it all, but I believe that when you when you let a man work for and earn your time, he appreciates it a little differently. That's right. The problem with a lot of women, 
sad to say, and I'm not coming down on women. I love what God did with go. the woman. Mm -hmm. I, I love him. God, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah to your name for the woman. But here's the thing. When it comes to women, you have to understand too many women just do too much too fast too soon. This is true. And we as men, we only value that which we work for That's and right. earn. If you don't believe me, ask the brother beside you. Is he right? That's the brother over there. Is he yeah. right? <laughs> you just can't give us, you just can't give it to us. Yeah. 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 And he's right. We, he's we, telling the truth. Got that I, word. I agree. We, we appreciate it a little differently mm -hmm. when we have to earn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You worked for that. Yeah. And he brought the issue of love. Here's the other problem with love and with women. Women equate love as an emotion. And that's where I was going next. I was just waiting for you to get off your love, house. Love, but love. yes, we do. And I said that. Emotions. Love. We are run by our emotions. Love is a decision. It's a choice. Mm. It is a responsible, mature choice that you're going to be accountable to another person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reason why I know it is not an emotion is because I believe in the Bible and even the principles of the Bible. And the principle of the Bible says this, that love is commanded for us to do. Mm -hmm. It's not a natural emotion. Our emotions ain't nothing but chemicals in our body. That's the truth. It's nothing but hormones. And so when I deal with sex in my book, uh, there's a chapter called 18 Seconds. You got to get the book. Yeah, I'm yeah. There's a chapter called 18 I'm Seconds. I'm trying to look through real quick. And I, and I talk about, <laughs> and I talk about um, the impact orgasms have in relationships. And, and they do have one. And so I, now I, I don't condone premarital sex. However, I teach from the aspect of if you do this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you engage in premarital sex, I want you to be man enough and woman enough to deal with the consequences. Right. Right. right? right. Because the way God designed sex is that there are certain chemicals and uh, hormones that are released in your system during an <laughs> orgasm, I talk about it, that, uh, that were only designed within the confines of marriage. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, with that being said, uh, we deal with uh, the whole issue of, the orgasms and, and premarital sex. So it's a wonderful, wonderful chapter there. One of my favorite chapters as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? Y'all got to get this book. <laughs> Y'all got to get this book. I'm loving the comments. They're just going so fast. I can't keep up. But, um, whew, and the other question that I was asked, let's get this out here. And you kind of touched on it again. It's like you touching the questions before I can get to it. What is the difference between dating and courting? I think these, this new generation do not understand that difference. Okay, so courting is uh, the aspect where, um, where for men, <laughs> where they, when men actually put a plan together. We're talking about women today. Well, <laughs> well, w w men court women. Right, that's right. If, if we want to, okay. So, I know what it is. I need you. To so, <laughs> so men court women. Okay. All right. Dating is not. It, it doesn't involve commitment. Mm -hmm. Courting does. It does. That's good. All right? He put that good. So the whole courting aspect is where as I put a plan together that I'm going to um, uh, spend time with this person. I'm going to bring this person around my family. I'm going to uh, share with this person what it is I want to do in life and find out what it is they want to do. And those are certain aspects and parameters that should be only uh, done when the confines with a person that you see is going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Dating mm -hmm. again is back what I said. Mm -hmm. You're going to get something to eat. <laughs> you're going to a concert. Yeah. Those are things you can and do you by come, yourself. And you're on the way back home. Right. Those are things you can do by yourself. <laughs> yes. You know. Yes. And so uh, that's one of the main uh, differences with, between courting and, and dating. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, thank you for clarifying that for my for my wonderful audience out there. Dating and courting is different. Yes. And I just would like for my beautiful women queens, stop attaching emotion to dating. I, I, I'm just being real. Hey, stop let, attaching let's, emotion to dating. Let's go deeper. 
Stop equating sex with love. Mm. That too. Because men, okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this right. Um, <laughs> really, there's no there's no such thing as making love. It's not. It's no such thing. If you have to make something, if you have to make anything, what was it before you made it? Nothing. I'm just going to so, say nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so men, at the end of the day, it's 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 just sex. Mm-hmm. We we don't we don't attach it emotions is. to it. Yeah. It, it is a, a it is a re, it is a release. <laughs> It is a release. It's just a release. For it's them. a physical release. <laughs> There's no emotions attached to it, and that's why women can't understand it. Because to them, them there's there is the it. emotional component. It goes yeah. back to those chemicals yeah. and hormones. But, and I'm I different. share. Maybe that's why my friends be like, "Jerry, why you act like a dude?" I don't <laughs> know. I, I have come to understand that it's just a release for a man. All right. Even with the woman that he loves. All right. So it. it Again, and when you understand that, what that that one little sentence I just said yeah. is a lot. Even with the woman that he loves, mm-hmm. yeah. it's just, just a release. It is. He does not. That does not sum. I love you because I was able to. Love. It don't have anything to do with ain't it. love. Love no ain't splash, got nothing wives, to do with it. It ain't got nothing to do with it. Men need sex. Yeah, they just Goodness. need it. They need it. <laughs> But what I tell men, this is what I tell men, men, if you're not married and you're having yeah, sex, better be careful. you have to deal with the consequences. That's right. Let me give you one or two of them. I'm ruining when, these when, women's brains. When, when, you, when you do it to a woman and you do it right mm. and you're not married yeah. and those emotions yeah. and those chemicals are released to the highest level, yes. you can't get upset. You can't when she if she blow up your car. (laughs) (laughs) If while you sleep, she goes to your phone or she takes a blade and want to cut it off. Yes, yes, you can't get upset. Yes, you have been warned, fellas. You 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 have been warned here, right? You have been warned. (laughs) You have been warned. You are holding a live grenade. You have been warned. Because and you got to be willing to deal with the consequences. Taps into their emotion. It really yeah. does. Yep. But if a woman can re- figure out how to do it without an emotion. Anyway, let's move on. It's, it's, uh, I, I'm, it's the truth I'm not now. saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's impossible for a woman to do it. It's 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 really it's not hard impossible because they the way they've been wired. Right. Exactly. It's okay. not impossible. You can train your mind to do anything. Really. Right. So. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> He said, I'm funny. (laughs) Well, I just want to deliver a truth bomb and help my sisters out because we sometimes hurt ourselves. Yeah. We do. We hurt ourselves. And that's the problem with, again, women feel like they can change a man. You can't sleep with a man enough. You can't cook enough meals for him. You can't buy him enough to make him do what you want him to do. When a man is ready to make a move, matter of fact, um, a man ain't is not, is not getting married until he's ready. That's right. Now here's the problem: but a there man are some know men immediately. But some men have, and I hate to say this, some men have been given the ultimatum for marriage, and did it because they did not want, really want to see that woman with someone else. So they they went ahead and married the yeah. woman when they were no, not good ready. Well. That, that woman wasn't even the one they wanted. And only to discover uh, a year, two in, two years in, that this is not really what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And because, again, love is not an emotion for men, mm-hmm. we're able to mm, uh, take our energies and place them in other places. Mm. And so, and I kind of covered that in my first I kind of covered that in my first uh, chapter, and I talk about the male ego. Um, size does matter. So, what does I mean by size does he matter? I went back to size. And so, let me <laughs> let me let me give you let me give you a, a, just a little snippet of that. When I talk about size does matter, and this is key, and this has brought this has brought clarity to a lot of women. A man's ego is huge. Yes, it is. It is big as Atlanta, Georgia. Woo, bigger than you know, Atlanta ain't. But that big. here is. <laughs> 
<laughs> but here's the part, women, you got to get. As big as our egos are, it is extremely delicate. Very. And once you break a man's ego, once you break a man's ego, he emotionally checks out the relationship. That's right. He mentally and emotionally checks out. Now, here's the problem. He will continue to have sex with you. He'll continue to pay He'll the bills. He'll continue to take little pookie to the... But that emotional connection is, is gone. gone. And you will do everything in your power to try to retrieve that. And you will lose yourself in the midst. Oh, my bad. This but even talk. beyond <laughs> that, let me tell you what's even more dangerous than that. Is that some women don't even know they did it. That's right. Because of the fine line of the breakage. Yes. Yes. Just, just, just one little simple thing. A big one. But real simple, as a woman, don't you ever, let the church say ever. Ever! Don't you ever compare your man to another man. Mm. I don't care if it's your dad. Ooh, that was a true I don't care if it's your pastor. Oh, I don't care if it's LeBron James. I'm trying to tell you, I'm ready to shout Do shot it not him. compare your man to another man. Mm, mm, mm. You can't do that. Mm. And so... Uh, just good. that little slight thing That's right there will, will damage your whole relationship. And so what happens then, that man is then seeking for someone else to stroke his ego. That's right. That's right. And once he finds something or someone to stroke his ego, that's when his body is going to follow where his mind has already been. Yes. Whew, Lord have mercy. This has been a great, 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 great conversation. Lord, get the book, Evil Fact. There's more, I promise you. There's more. You can not go. just <laughs> you, size matters. Yeah. There's more. <laughs> yeah, I talk about use your pee and get results. Oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy. And for the, <laughs> yeah. Whew, it's hot in here, y'all. Uh, tell them where they can get the evil thing. Uh, of course, you can always go on Amazon.com and get it. Barnes and Noble online. Um, but my preference is that you reach me personally. You can go to IamALWilson.com. And um, you can uh, follow any links that we have there to get the book. We also have a T-shirt line of uh, Queen certified um, T-shirt line and King certified. Uh, and, and you said something earlier about the Queens, and and I don't want to I don't want to mess with you all, psyche. But listen, uh, and the brothers in the room can attest to this: uh, only Kings crown queens. I so I'm gonna leave that alone. But uh, now that's to, a whole other topic. <laughs> you can I go. don't want to get started because I got another guest I want to bring in here. But that <laughs> I've got to bring this man back. We're gonna talk about that. You, one. you can you can go to imalwilson.com. Yes. Uh, you can find me on all social media. Um, uh, pastor, author, Pastor Anthony L. Wilson. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. The Relationship Mentor. And so um, mm -hmm. you can bring me in for men's retreats, women's retreats, anything got to do with uh, relationships. I'm available for that. Okay, y'all got it, Mr. Anthony Wilson. I am a I am a Wilson dot com. Check him out. Get the Eve effect, ladies. Let's figure out how to get our desired results from him, okay? Um, I'm going to take a short break real quick. We'll be right back in just a quick second. I told y'all I had a nice little treat for you guys. So stay tuned. We will be right back.
Welcome back to the Candid Conversation Show with Coach Stacy on right here on 108 Praise Radio where we voice the gospel. I told you guys that I had a treat for you, so um, I'm going to introduce him real quick. We're still going to come back to Mr. Wilson for Ali because I know y'all was loving it. I see the comments and everything going up, and we're going to chat with him just a, a little bit more. But I want to introduce to you Mr. Trayvon Brown. I have brought him in. He is an independent artist, a currently un unreleased independent artist, but he has this amazing thing he does with a saxophone. I just had to bring him on. He's actually going to be at my event that I've been asking all of you guys to come out to on August the 2nd. So I'm going to let him give you a little taste of what he got so that you know what you got to look forward to. But, Mr. Trayvon, thank you for joining us on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Having a wonderful time today. He's been my amen <laughs> choir back in, you know, in the back. You know, Mr. Wilson right, right back here. He's been back there it was Shouting going out. Shout on. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of speaks some truth, wasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. He okay. covered a lot of good topics. Uh, I really enjoyed, yeah. enjoyed the message today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was awesome. It was awesome. But I want to tell you real quick, Mr. Mr. Brown is from San Francisco, California, the Bay Area. Hey yo. He is a <laughs> freelance musician and saxophonist. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I heard him play, I was just like, Oh, I'm gonna bring you on the show. I want you to play it because it sounded so good. So. You want to give us a little something? Yeah, I'll give you a little something. Uh, I'm going to play one of my favorite songs, actually. It's by Donald Lawrence, Tri-City Singers. I don't know if y'all heard it, Encourage Yourself. Okay. But, yeah, it's one of my one of my all-time favorites, favorites, so I okay. hope y'all like it. <laughs> so we got this good match here. Okay. academy.com check it out register now get your tickets before they're sold out okay so we want to thank you for coming on playing a little bit for us oh yeah i want to thank you for having me you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome and we'll be seeing more of mr trayvon brown around okay so as we close as we close out today mr wilson yes thank you so much for coming on today thank you for having me mm -mm -mm. He spoke some words up in here. I'm going to have you back. He told me that once I read the book, I want, I'm going to want to bring him back. I'm looking forward to that. You made me want to read the book today. And so let me just say this. We just had a mix-up with the um, with the addresses. We was going to send her a copy of the book. So it's not her fault. It was no, my, it's fault. Not my fault. And, um, <laughs> it's not your fault. And so... Fault. Um, um, so she 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 has the book. She's gonna read it, of course, yeah. and then I know she's gonna want to have me come back, and yeah. we're gonna talk about some. Yeah, things. Yeah, we're gonna so. talk about some stuff. 
And uh, I like again. I think I'm going to read When Size Matter <laughs> before I read anything else. That's the first chapter. The first, oh, the first chapter. chapter. The very first chapter. Okay, well, that's good. So I'll then. hook you right on in there. Right, I'm right. I'm thinking I might have to put my address down too. I know, right? So you can get you one too, huh? Oh, good. Yeah. Yes. And he said men read it and they like it. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. I definitely uh, felt very in tune with everything that he was saying. And there's some things I was like, you know what? That's, that's true. You know that's what I'm saying? Like, is. I felt that. I definitely felt that. some truth up in here today. Yeah, I definitely felt that. Yeah. So I'll yeah. be excited to read the book. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Um, Let's see. So what I usually do when I'm about to end is I ask my guests what their favorite motivational quote is, what gets them fired up so they can share that with the audience so they can, you can inspire them. What's your favorite motivational quote, Traylon? Mm. My favorite motivational quote would have to be, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't shoot. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's good. That just spoke to me. <laughs> that just spoke to me. Yeah. Um, a great one that I love to always say to people that you don't uh, you don't have to allow someone to drive you crazy. You can walk there by yourself. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Y'all mean. hear that? That's so true. <laughs> That's <a> mean. <laughs> that is so <laughs> true. Me the <laughs> okay, I got it. Boy, you just throwing them down, dang. That's just one of them. Atlanta <laughs> one, you know what I mean? That's just one of them. <laughs> just putting it down today. I know, I know. It got hot up in here. Some, okay. Somebody hold on. Okay. <laughs> Great show. I thank you guys once again for coming on. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Absolutely. I had fun. Same here. I can't wait to have you back. I can't wait to see you on August 2nd. Oh, yeah. Um, if y'all want to follow me on Instagram. Yes, please do. It's Nor Cali King, like Northern California, N O R C A L I dot King. That's Instagram and my Twitter, which I just started using, is Bay Area N C K. So once again, y'all, I'm Trayvon Brown. Thank you so much for having me today. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> How can I get in touch with you? I know you said it. Uh, you can you can get me on all 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 social media. Uh, Anthony L. Wilson Senior. I am A. L. Wilson and the Relationship Mentor. You can just type those in. You can Google me. You can find me um, at um, preaching events all over the city, all over the country. I just came out of revival, and so I'm uh, on my way on vacation next week, so I can't wait for that. I need a much-needed break, but um, you can find me. And also, just reach out to me um, at www.iamalwilson.com. Awesome. Y'all got that? So check them out. Get the Eve effect. Get the Eve effect, ladies. Come on. We're going to probably start some book clubs on the Eve. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I like size. Okay. So moving on. <laughs> Today, as I close. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. <laughs> First Peter 5, 8 and 9, and it reads, Be alert of sober mind. Mm-hmm. Your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. That came from the NIV version. Be alert, meaning to be self-controlled and alert. We all have emotions, and it's so funny. I was laughing to myself as we were talking about emotions today because I knew what my devotion was going to be, and I'm like, oh, wow, God, look how you work. But we all have emotions, and we always will. They're a part of us. We're humans. I believe, though, that emotional stability should be one of the main goals of everyone. We should seek God to learn how to manage our emotions and stop them from managing us. Okay, I urge you to make make emotional maturity a priority in your life. If you do not believe you are doing a good job of managing your emotions, begin to pray and seek God for emotional maturity. I also encourage you to learn what upsets you the most or prompts you to behave emotionally and be watchful during those situations. Ask God to help you manage your emotions and Him to ask him to help you mature in you and have greater understanding of why you do the things that you do. As I leave you today, think about ways you can invest in yourself, invest in your emotional maturity, okay? I love you guys. I love you all, each and every one of you. You have been listening and watching Candid Conversation with Coach Sashi, where we have real stories, real people, and real topics right here on 108 Praise Radio, where we voice the gospel. Thank you for tuning in. Another shout out to all of my loves out there. We'll see you next time.